Well, back out here, I'm gonna be putting this, uh, this is the food plot we call the ditch bank food plot because there's a ditch behind me. Anyways, I'm gonna be putting this into brassicas today. Honey hole to be exact, Antler King's honey hole. And uh, the reason why I'm planting it so early is because, well technically, I'm not hunting over this plot, so I don't want this to really, well I actually have to kind of pass through here when I get to one of my stands. So I don't really want this to be like a super good attraction food plot this fall. And uh, the reason why I'm planting early also is because, just to test out, um, to see how much bigger, well I want these brassicas here to get really big, kind of woody, so the deer don't feed on them too hard in uh, October and early November, but by come late December and even January, these this is gonna be like a prime food source. These turnip bulbs and um, kale varieties in here are gonna be huge. I mean, this stuff will be like almost waist high by uh, you know September. This is this is the first brassica food plot I'm planting the whole year, and uh, they always say like on the bag to plant August 1st to September 15th, whatever, but if you plant in middle of August, your plants are only going to get like maybe ankle high. But if you plant, technically the best time to plant brassicas is going to be any time in July, July 1st. But te probably the best time is like July 15th. Middle of July is like, at least for around here, southern Wisconsin here, and probably most of the Midwest, you can, July is probably the big brassica month. August is getting a little late. The plants don't really get as big, but they're a little more tender and probably a little more attractive. But, I mean, you take your chances. I mean, you either have a smaller, more attractive, tender plant, or you have a bigger plant that's going to last longer, feed the deer more, and you're going to have more of it throughout the season. That little tender plant, it's hot for two weeks and it's gone. If you got a bigger, you know, you got bigger plants, they're going to last longer in, in throughout the season, so you know you'll have food. Anyways, I'm going to be putting this in today. I'm going to disc, disc it up really quick. It already is disc. It was disc probably like two or three weeks ago. Looks pretty good. We had soybeans here last year, so that's why there's not many weeds in here. You can tell it's pretty weed free because we sprayed it last year with the beans. But uh, yeah, looks good. So I'm going to get to disking here and then I'm going to plant. And I'll show you some results once they start coming up. All right, so my stupid phone didn't work when I took a video of disking. But right now I'm going to drag it just to level off some of these ruts. So this right here is Antler King's honey hole. That's what I'm gonna be putting in in this food plot right here. And you gotta see how small these seeds are. I mean, I planted this stuff in the previous years and the first year I planted it, I did overseed it. Brassicas are very commonly overseeded. So when you're walking around out there broadcasting, you gotta think, just look at where the seeds are and just imagine a plant that'll get, you know, almost, almost waist high, about knee high or so with a stem, you know, the size of your finger or so. So uh, this, this is a half acre bag right here. So I'm gonna only use not even half of it. I mean, like I said, this is just a tiny little spot right here. Well, I just finished up seeding and you can see the little red seeds right here, how far they're all spaced apart. Looks pretty good, I think. Like I said, a lot of these plants can get, you know, about as big as your finger or so. So, you don't want them too close, all these seeds. Well, here we are, made it back out to this uh, little ditch bank food plot. Um, it's looking really good. Um, I don't know how long this is after, but I'll put it up on the screen. I'll have to check, but this stuff came in really nice. And you can see the spacing of the plants is pretty good, but in a few spots, it's just a little bit too thick. Like this spacing right here is pretty good right here, but in some areas, it's just a little, a little thick, but it, it looks good. The whole plot came in really, really nice. I'm just really happy with the results. So uh, I'll show you the results what this plot looks like in about a week. 
and then I'm gonna probably upload or maybe I'll take it out to another week after that but you can see on the edge here it's a little thin probably just because it's a little shadier right here but it'll fill in pretty nicely and all I did was pack this with the four-wheeler so and previous years we've packed with a culta packer but I mean I couldn't really turn the culta packer around too easily here and I just didn't really have time to hook it up that night so I just packed it right with the four-wheeler didn't take too much longer but as you can see it turned out really nice Well, here we are, made it back out to the ditch bank food plot. It's looking good, but it's really dry and we got a whole, this whole come, upcoming week is all dry too. So, I mean, the areas in the shade actually are bigger than the areas out here in the full sun, which is telling you that it is dry. The plot came in really, really good. Very, very weed free because like I said earlier in the video, we had soybeans here and we sprayed them off. And then just that one spring, can really really suppresses the weeds even the following year um, I can already see the differences between the brassicas here this right here is a purple top turnip and then this is like the forage rape stuff it was multiple different varieties dwarf Essex rape um, there was some other ones too but uh, yeah these are like the purplish ones down here at the base and they just got little different colored leaves those are the purple top turnips and those the deer love to eat in the late late winter they'll dig up and chew on them bulbs well they'll, they'll eat up all the green leaves and everything so these brassica food pots are just amazing how much food they produce for the deer and the good thing is the deer don't mess with them at all right now and they are really really looking bad i'm really starting to get worried what's going to happen to these brassicas here because i mean this um this soil here is kind of sandy i put my hand on it and it feels Oh my god, is it insanely hot. That's why this uh, disking up method, or just the tilling up of the soil, that, that's like basically the method everyone uses is the wrong method. Because as you can tell, this exposed soil is just getting fried and these plants are probably going to end up dying on me. These, this ragweed and all this other grass looks, looks just fine, but my brassicas, you can tell they're kind of starting to weep. And I think if we don't get rain soon, they're going to be dead. But you look over here, the ones in the shade, look at how much better these look. How they're not really like weeping over, they're kind of like perked up better. Come out here, they're smaller and they're starting to dry up. It's been pretty dry for the last week to week and a half. And like I said, the next upcoming week is pretty dry too. Right there's some little pocket of grass up there, but the brassicas came in really nice. But I don't know, we might have to replant this sometime later in August if a lot of this dies off which I'm thinking it might at this point. That's a bummer though. I really, I mean these things have already looking like they're starting to go downhill. Look at that, that looks crappy. Son of a gun. Well, you might see this food plot in the future. Might have to replant this one in another video. Hope, hopefully not, but I think we're gonna have to do parts of it because the edges look fine where they're kind of getting some shade. But in the middle here, it's this soil's, the difference between the soil temperature in the middle here where it's full sun and the edges where it's kind of shady right now is like night and day, complete difference. And these plants are all starting to dry up and I think they're gonna die off. So worst comes to worst, we can just broadcast more seed in here before some rain or might have to spray off a good portion of the plot and kill it and replant the whole whole freaking thing so uh hey that's the end of this guy this video guys and i got lots of more content coming brassica food plot videos more i uh been kind of looking for better methods to plant brassicas because of this right here basically all this exposed soil you see i mean it's just heating up like crazy with this sun it's supposed to get 90 degree temperatures in the future here but technically I've been working on lots of no-till and spray and seed methods for brassicas, clover, or any type of food plot really. But uh, that, there'll be a lot of content like that coming out soon, so stay tuned if you want to learn more about that. And you, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And until next time, guys, see ya.